Hey guys, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Where are you are and where are you? Welcome to a new vlog. If you've been following me on Instagram, the link's here. You would know that I've had the TVS IQ since yesterday evening and I need to return this in the next uh, one, two hours. So, thought of summarizing my first ad impressions. If you're expecting a detailed review, there are tons of videos which do that. This is just my first take. Being an EV owner, I thought I can give you maybe a different insight. Yeah, one insight is don't cross like this. Anyway, with the upcoming Aether Ristas launch, which is touted as a family scooter, I thought this is the perfect time to understand why TVS IQ, which is considered as one of the family EV scooters, is its biggest competition. Because this is slowly creeping up the charts, it's number two, it's consistently racking up sales of around 15,000 scooters per month across India. I've seen a lot of families use this after riding for roughly 30-40 kilometers yesterday in the city. I can easily tell why. You see, these are rumble strips which most of the scooters have ridden, the electric ones, they struggle. but. This one is very comfortable on these tumble strips. If you still go too fast, the suspension bottoms out a bit. But if you're going at slower speeds, like I am doing around 30 to 45, it handles them and soaks the bumps really well. They're really bad rumble strips, by the way. People in Hyderabad can understand, but I feel very comfortable riding over them on this scooter. Another thing I am noticing is the range. The range estimate here is pretty accurate. I've had the scooter for 40% and I've depleted roughly 40 kilometers. So expect anywhere between 80 to 100 kilometers in city conditions, in eco mode and in power mode, you can get anywhere between 65 to 75. And the top speed in eco mode is around 50. Varies by person to person and weight. But in Eco, 50 is the top speed and in power mode, I clocked around 79 yesterday, which is, I think, the rated top speed of this too. In terms of specs, frankly speaking, most of you wouldn't... Are a cube, eh? <laughs> anyway, in terms of specs, most of you wouldn't care about them, to be honest, except range and performance. So the power is very similar to any other IC scooters. In fact, talking about IC scooters, unlike Aether and Ola, this is based out of the TVS Jupiter platform. So that is one reason you might be familiar when you get on one, it would feel like a regular IC scooter, except for maybe the throttle. You see the throttle response. Whenever I release the throttle, there is a very aggressive region in the sense that if I leave it, it will come to a stop till 5 km per hour. Look at that, how it's braking without any inputs. That's pretty aggressive for an electric scooter and you can't customize that. Also, probably not visible in this night mode. If you put it in day mode, this screen flickers a lot whenever it transitions from the regular display to a region display. And that's very uh, distracting because my eyes are looking here, but then I see something flicker here that's distracting my vision. They try to replicate engine braking from scooters like that, but it's just that I think they should give adjustable region or maybe dial it down a bit more. I think this is done in regard to get the maximum range possible. Also yesterday evening, uh, it was around 40 degrees in Hyderabad. This was showing some alerts, most probably because the scooters walk or hot. It didn't ask me to stop or the performance didn't come down. At least I didn't notice it. Compared to Aether and Ola, this is a heavier scooter. This is at 108 kilos and sometimes you can feel the... Yendukakka. This feels heavier and you can feel it when you're accelerating sometimes. Also, talking about acceleration, there is a bit of a lag when you transition from the region mode to the regular mode. Like for instance, it's in region mode. I fully pinned the throttle and there is a bit of a lag. So maybe working on the throttle response will go a long way in improving the experience of this scooter. Okay, let me show you quickly how the acceleration is in power mode. We don't have any traffic behind us. Pin the throttle, takes a while. 
but it can go up to its top speed on this scooter i'm comfortable using the eco mode with the current city traffic conditions and all i think that gives me the best balance because in city conditions when you're between that speed of 25 to 45 kilometers per hour this scooter feels very peppy in power mode i think the compromise is the power is not that big of a change and the range takes a bigger hit so i use power mode to overtake sometimes like if i feel like overtaking the scooter in front i can use the power mode quickly brake turn counter steer helps and then get going and switch to eco again talking about brakes the front is a disc brake it works well the rear is a drum so the combi braking is not that great and most of the time you are supposed to use the front brake in here because the front stops and the rear doesn't do much in terms of handling i didn't get any corners but you can feel the you can feel the weight when you're doing some corners not like really bad but a typical scooter weight okay let me show you how a u turn works here did you notice that like the steering hits my knee a complaint that was there on the other is still on this you have to really put your feet wide and then turn if you put it close it's still not ergonomically good but in terms of just the riding posture there's a bigger and more comfortable scooter than either let me show you finding the side stand is a bit tricky but yeah it's okay so that's the first ride uh, impressions of the TVS IQ S this is not the ST variant let me quickly show you the under seat storage you can't access it from here as only to turn on and lock the scooter not a fan of this that you need to have another key to unlock the storage apparently as per the website is 34 liters but the charger takes up most of the space for a half face helmet which fits comfortably in my Aether scooter it doesn't fit here this feels very shallow i can't believe this 34 liters on their website even this space is shown as storage so i don't know why but there is a usb socket to charge which is good takes a regular plug point that's the charging pin again tvs own standard not a universal standard locks well but this key is pretty flimsy it looks fancy but trust me and there's the charging connector it takes roughly 4 to 5 hours because the charger is rated at 650 watt battery capacity is 3 kilowatts So it takes roughly 4.5 hours to go from 0 to 80 percent. In terms of switch gear, it feels okay, but a bit flimsy. All the buttons are, I think, on par with the class. The biggest problem for me is, let me show you. Turn on the screen here. I hope you can see it because it's very reflective. There is some kind of matte coating, but still, it's not good in daytime. You use this joystick, five-way joystick, to select. it misses few inputs like if i go to general settings if i want to go down it doesn't register sometimes all the inputs correctly when i select up or down sometimes it selects as a selection option when you press you select something and to go back you press left it's a hit and a miss and i don't like the feel of this joystick get that loud noise whenever you turn the scooter on so let me show you how the parking assistance works You need to hold the brake and select parking for a few seconds. Now you can creep in forward, and that's pretty fast for a parking mode. Let me switch to reverse. Not bad, and that's the display for you guys. You have some connectivity options for phone. turn by turn navigation bluetooth and sms but frankly speaking it's not easy to use i think the build quality on a whole is okay par but can be a lot better other scooter seems much more uh, better built and in terms of led lighting here i am not a fan of uh, the current gen uh, electric scooters or most of the motorcycles too we're getting led lights but they're not bright in the night you get high beam in the middle and then uh, low beam these are turn indicators everything's led they look fancy and nice but they're not bright nice design on the wheels there it looks a big scooter but the under seat storage on this one the s model is not great you get a good footrest for the rear passengers and it's a hub motor that's a 4.4 kilowatt or roughly 6 horsepower hub motor hub motors are cheaper easier for the manufacturer to build 
but the biggest problem with that is if you have some issue with the tire you can't operate on that by the way this glows up in the night when you're charging a fancy feature but not needed these are things that could be avoided decent space on a floorboard can you load a cylinder here haven't tested but it looks a bit too small i think this gap is too narrow even though the floorboard space is flat boy kind of a humid day even at nine o'clock just 30 degrees but feels humid i think i'm uh, comparatively having better first ride impressions of this scooter than i did with the ola primarily because ola felt very unreliable i'm sure like eight to nine out of ten of you guys who own an ola are happy with it but whenever i keep seeing the media i keep hearing a lot of stories about it some of my own friends had issues with the Aerola scooters. It's just that you can't really tell if the next scooter that's coming offline is reliable and has no issues. Comparatively with Aether and TVS iCube, I can say the next scooter that you get off the line is having a better chance of being reliable than Ola. That's for sure. Anyway, talking about the TVS iCube, I think there are a few things that really go for the scooter. One, it's very comfortable. Two, the range is very predictable and good range too. Around 90 to 100 kilometers in eco mode and the eco mode is usable. I don't like the eco mode in Aether. This one is more usable. And for someone who is looking for a comfortable family electric scooter, I think this ticks off most of the boxes except under seat storage. Please reply in the comments if the ST version has a bigger underseat storage but I would like to see if that would still fit a half face helmet. Full face to chodo. If you are in the market just about to buy the TVS IQBS just hold out for a few more days because tomorrow Aether is coming up with their biggest update to their electric scooter lineup with the launch of Rista which is started to have a bigger seat, more storage, ABS. We'll probably get to know more by tomorrow afternoon or evening. To conclude, I think TVS IQB has a lot going for it. There's a much more connectable scooter for people transitioning from IC scooters to electric. If you are used to that Activa or the Jupiters, this would feel at home. Hello, that's it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comment section. And in case you're watching this time, have a good day and take care. Bye-bye.